So in class, I asked students to tell me what they thought we were looking at. And they started noticing the numbers, um, which they were very familiar with. It goes all the way up to 22, plus there's an X and a Y. So they said, it looks like a karyotype, but and they did notice that there was one, two, three, four chromosomes in each of these pair locations. So that's a big problem, and, and they were absolutely right. Um, you can see that the chromosomes are really, really similar to each other in almost every spot. There's a few places where the chromosomes seem to differ quite a bit. So let's take a look right here. You can see in just this section alone, you can see the um, centromere where the left and the right sister chromatids bind. Um, this one's up higher, this one's a little lower, a little bit lower, much higher. So some of these look just like each other. These two look really, really close. And then some look a little unique, but overall the chromosome banding pattern, thick band, little, thick, light, double thick, really tiny, double, white, double. The pattern looks really, not exact, this is a little different, that's a little different, that's a little different, but so much of this, there's a double, there's a double, so much of this is the same. And so we wrote down on our paper that it is, it looks like a bunch of stained chromosomes, which is what a karyotype is. So that was great and quite accurate. So we put this on page 70 of our notebook and we wrote down that it does look like we've got a whole bunch of stained chromosomes there, which was true. But it is not a karyotype because this actually is for four different organisms. And so they took, instead of having two chromosomes from one organism and then two from the same organism that's at this pair and this pair, Instead, we just took one chromosome, but in each different location, we actually have a different organism. So this, this, that, and that are four different organisms. Now, they must be awfully closely related because if you are looking um, here, you can see that they have not only the same number of chromosomes as humans, 23 pairs or 23 uh, combinations of uh, parent chromosomes, but they also have X's and Y's, and that's fairly unique to a very small number of organisms similar to humans. So what we're looking at here is this chromosome is for the same organism as this one. The last one in all of those tetrads is the same. But you're gonna notice, if you look really, really closely at uh, location number two. Let's see if we can zoom in here. I want you to consider what's going on here. Looks like the first organism's chromosome is right here and it's intact. And then the second chromosome for the second organism is two pieces. And then the third organism is also two pieces. And so is the fourth organism. So we have four different organisms and they're so similar. When you look at their first pairs, look at all these similarities. It's a little bit taller but the pattern is almost identical all the way through. When you look down uh, the seventh position, you can see this banding pattern is so, so similar. But back up to the second setup of chromosomes, it looks like organism A here has one chromosome where organism B, C, and D have two. And that's kind of a big deal. So I'd like you to think about this. I will tell you that the first organism, organism A, let's go right down here. Organism A, organism B, C, and D. Organism A, in all of these positions, is human. So 
So organism A is a human. Can you think of who might be so genetically similar to us that our chromosomes are identical? Almost exactly, not exactly identical, but really, really similar. Think about that and I'll share the answer with you on Monday.